Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ben Stewart, Bible teacher, who just brought us a message about singleness. Welcome, Ben. Thank you. So good to have you back. Good to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. And so yeah. you have a new book coming out. And yeah. we are getting uh, some of your information from there, your singleness. And next week we're going to talk about marriage. Yeah. Um, and so whenever you talk about singleness, questions are always come up. Just okay. like I'm sure, sure we'll have some next week about marriage. Uh, but let sure. me jump yeah. into one here. Um, you talked about, and what I, what I took away from the sermon for me, was talking about how we just have this tendency of minimizing the benefits of the current mm. season that we're in, looking right. at the next one. And I can certainly relate to that with small children at home. I think, gosh, they yeah. grow up and have all I this can't time. Wait till, <laughs> yes. I can't wait till, yeah. um, And so uh, one of the questions that came around that was kind of questioning this benefit of singleness. Mm -hmm. um, the one who wrote in, their dad is a single dad, but mm -hmm. he has four kids mm -hmm. and he is working 14 hours a day. So he is a, he is single in the mm -hmm. sense that we're talking about in terms um, of today, but a single dad, which is yeah. a unique season as yeah. well. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk to me about um, that season? What advice you would have for him? And you said um, like four kids in the home? Four kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's your calling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and there are, um, I don't know all the ins and outs of what's happening maritally there, so I can't speak to that. But um, if you're in a situation either dad or mom, where you're raising children alone, that will be your primary mission field mm -hmm. and ministry zone. And that is not something to feel guilty about. And yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of the sermon doesn't, didn't necessarily aim at that zone. And that was mm -hmm. kind of what I was trying to say at the beginning of going, this isn't going to hit a lot of the uh, people's situations. And this would be one where you go, yeah, you're not free to go to mm -hmm. a mission trip here or there, but your mission is right in your house. Mm -hmm. It's these kids that, um, every free moment you got, you leverage to speak into their life. No one will have a louder voice into the lives of those kids mm -hmm. than you. Other people might have more frequent voices, but the voice of our fathers uh, tend to linger long. Mm -hmm. And and so if you're their dad, you creating as much space as possible to listen to them, take them out, drive in the car and talk and hear their heart and to speak honestly to them, your heart, bring them into the family of God. One of the best things my mom did as a single mom raising us was she just put us in the orbit of godly people. Mm -hmm. And as I look back on my life, there were, there was not like some guy, like my mom never remarried, but there were different men at different seasons of my life that mm -hmm. um, took us fishing, started a Bible study with me and my friends took me on a mission trip, mentored me, took me to a father-son camp. Mm -hmm. You know, there were different men that filled that role. And that's what the church does, the body of Christ. Yeah. We step into that. And so there are people that can do that. And that may not mean you have a new romantic relationship in the near future or wife, but there are families here that can mm -hmm. mother Community your kids for, and care yeah. for your children and for you. And mm -hmm. so I would say press into the family of God and then set your gaze on, I'm to seek the Lord with that time that would have been with my wife, that's the time with the Lord. And, and these kids are my mission field. And if you lead them to him, he's gonna take care of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot more to say. Yeah, about that. I love how you talked about the end about locking hands together, single, married, yeah. moving the mission of Jesus forward. That's why the church is here. It's why Faith Bridge exists, is to come around families and singles and for all of us to yeah. Um, support each other. And Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, and I look back at, you know, the story I told of myself as a 20 something year old person getting to really invest heavily in the lives of a lot of our students came, were in divorced homes, single parent homes. And uh, I go, I didn't think of it this clearly till I got there. I'm like, this is what men did for me. Mm -hmm. And now I'm getting to do it for these kids. And I'd have these single parents come and we're so grateful and like, I can't understand why you'd even do that. I'm like, well, a, an allegiance to the Lord leads you to people. Mm -hmm. It always does. 
Um, but then I look back and go, they did it for me, and I'm gonna do it for them. And there are people that will love your kids and help you. And, uh, and then I think you'll keep doing that and help others too. That's good. Uh, the other question that came around, um, you talked about um, just what's happening in the world. You put it in the way of the world is on fire, and mm -hmm. it is. Watch the news. Yeah. It's sad. Uh, so this question is that wanted to know, you talked about the largest humanitarian crisis now. What were you speaking of? Yeah, well, I was quoting the UN. You know, they're talking about in the Middle East and North Africa, the issue of starvation, mm -hmm. that 20 million people are starving right now and really localized in four countries. And some of it is, you know, issues with um, the weather, but most of it is issues with extremism mm -hmm. and people being forced to flee. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are Christians that are having to mm -hmm. flee hostile areas, mm -hmm. but a lot of them aren't Christians. They're just people that are in a war-torn city and fleeing and they don't get to pack up and flee. And so you've got millions of people that literally do not know where the next meal will come from. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, it's become a political issue in the States. Refugees kickstarts this whole political conversation for people. But you go, look, overseas right now, there's millions of people wandering and without food, and there's children starving to death. And I think we can all agree, children starving to death isn't a solution of any kind. And so there's some amazing ministries and organizations all around the world that are first responding to come and help mm -hmm. people in need. And I just think if you can look at um, the hurts in the world, we, we, we have to be compelled there. Jesus moves among the poor and the hurting, and there's millions of them right now. So. The UN speaking to it. There's a lot of ministries that you can get involved in that would point towards it. I'm sure Faith Bridge is behind some of them. Yeah, we are. Yeah, and That's I would good. really encourage people to, to care and do something. That's good. Uh, well, thank you for being back with us. It's yeah. always a pleasure to have you. Thanks. And uh, looking forward to your message next week Mary's as we hit marriage. Here we Come go. On. Don't miss it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.